welcome to Spotlights. This is the podcast for the Yale Forum on Religion and Ecology. And each week we feature somebody who's working in or around the field of religion and ecology. And this week I have a couple people that uh, I want to introduce to you and introduce a new reading group uh, that's being put together for uh, early career scholars in the field. So we have Timothy Grieve Carlson a uh, doctoral candidate in the religion department at Rice University, and Russell Powell. And Russell, you're a visiting professor, I believe, at Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences at Boston College, and working with like environmental theology and ethics. Uh, so welcome, Tim, Russ. Thanks, Thanks Tim. So I figured before we start talking about the reading group, love to hear a little bit about what you all are doing, how you're engaging the field of religion ecology, like where your work is at right now. So uh, let's go ahead and start with Tim. What are you up to? Sure, yeah. So I am uh, in a religious studies department working on a PhD in American religion. Um, and in, in terms of training and background, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of been trained in a history of religions, kind of comparative um, style of scholarship. And what I'm doing with that is kind of applying it to American religious history and also um, ecological philosophy kind of generally. Um, so kind of coming towards religion and ecology kind of in a roundabout way. Um, my dissertation is on this particular uh, monastic figure named Johannes Kelpius who uh, came to Pennsylvania in the 17th century. And it's kind of, I think a really early example of um, an American religious figure with a kind of ecological bent to his work and uh, famous for kind of um, being really preoccupied with wilderness as sort of a, a theological construct in a very kind of early way that I think preempts a lot of uh, what we see in later American constructions of wilderness as a religious category. Um, yeah. Nice. That's interesting. I love it when people are able to dig up figures that aren't the only people we always hear about, right? There's a handful of folks that we hear about a lot. I'm like, there's got to be more people out there. Uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, but it's also nice to hear more facets of some of the folks we already know. Uh, and I know that, uh, Russ, you're doing some of that with John Muir, right? We all hear about John Muir all the time. And yet there's some stuff we don't necessarily hear about, like his relationship to race and racism. Uh, so Russ, tell us a little bit about what you're up to. That's right. Um, so, as you said, Sam, my my focus for the last few years has been has been John Muir and and reading him um, for the ways that um, uh, you know potentially better or more insightful interpretation of his uh, religious thought um, can help us to better understand his his uh, ethical vision and and his politics. Um, so that's that's really where uh, my uh, my work is located. This sort of um, intersection of, of religion, ethics, and politics, particularly as it's um, inflected in uh, environmental issues. Um, I recently finished my uh, uh, doctoral program in, in, uh, down at Princeton Seminary and wrote my dissertation on John Muir. And uh, originally went down there sort of to explore the, um, we'll say the uh, reformed uh, theological traditions um, sort of tradition of, of informing American environmental thought. Um, so uh, I actually took a, a couple courses on uh, Emerson um, and kind of got the kind of uh, the, the Emerson bug bit me, I guess, and um, ended up um, exploring uh, a figure like Muir who was deeply um, influenced by, uh, you know, sort of Calvinist uh, reformed thought, um, but sort of locating him at the, um, at the nexus of where sort of um, Augustinian or Calvinistic Christianity and um, sort of Emersonian transcendental democratic criticism intersect. Um, and uh, whereas Muir has, has commonly been um, engaged on that Augustinian side, um, not so much on, on the, the transcendentalist side and, and especially not as much where, uh, you know, sort of Muir stands astride these two traditions, so. Nice, that's great. Yeah, it's, it's hard not to get bit by the Emerson bug. 
That, that happens to the best of us. Oh, and I think I heard a dog in the background here. Who's, who's, whose dog was that? That was mine, uh, and he doesn't bark very much. So he, he waits until we're recording. So That's good. I'm happy to have animal companions on the show. I think a few people have had them around, but so far they don't they don't like to chime in too much. Uh, so it's it's a pleasant it's a pleasant noise. Uh, well, geez, what you know I really wanted to talk about was uh, was this reading group that we're putting together and to provide some context, uh, you know, we were at the American Academy of Religion, the virtual annual meeting um, in what, you know, end of November, early December. And we were on a panel together uh, that was in the mysticism unit talking about nature mysticism, ecological mysticism. And uh, I think it was one of those cases where, you know, we hadn't prepared a panel together in advance. There were just, you know, three papers that got grouped together, but there was a lot of resonances between them. And it kind of got us to thinking about making something like this happen more where we had opportunities to read papers for each other and uh and so then i think it was you russ who kind of first came up with this idea like hey let's put together a reading group so uh tell us a little bit about it and let's kind of chat figure out what this group is about and invite people to participate yeah thanks um so Based on the strength of the conversation, and there's Gromit going again, um, based on the, the, the strength of the conversation we were able to generate um, at, at the, the conference panel, as you were saying, Sam, um, I, I think um, this was also the creation or the idea for this, this reading group um, also came about as a result of um, you know, how, how much isolation we've been feeling the last, the last year being at home. Um, and also our, you know, the fact that we, in my case, have this new really sort of uh, facility with Zoom um, where I feel much more comfortable interacting and, and communicating on it. Um, so sort of taking all these, all these factors and combining them and saying, you know, th this could open up some pathways for some, some greater conversations, especially, um, among those of us in the field of religion and ecology, who um, uh, you know are, are you know early career scholars and and really looking um, to get a better sense of 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 some of the new horizons in the field um, and how we can how we can contribute to those. Um, so that was what led me to to reaching out to um, to Sam and Timothy here. Um, and saying, you know, what, what if, what if we had had a, a sort of more regular meeting or, or opportunity for these, for these gatherings, and um, sort of concocted an, an idea to um, hold uh, meetings for early career uh, scholars in the field of religion and ecology via Zoom, say once or twice a month, um, where we get together um, and either discuss. Um, a piece of uh, someone's writing that they're, they're you know, their work in progress um, or um, something, uh, some sort of new publication in the field um, to sort of feel out and, and get a sense of, of, you know, new directions um, taking shape. Um, so yeah, th that was, that was the, the genesis for, um, you know, the, this reading group we're trying to get off the ground. Nice. Uh, Tim, I wonder if you could elaborate a little bit on like the structure of the group, who's included, why are we having structure at all, why not just meet, you know, kind of randomly as friends, you know, what's, what's the system here? Sure, well, I, I think, and I, I hope I can get all the details right, our idea was sort of to, to create a space where um, early career scholars, so we're thinking, um, you know, folks from candidate level to uh, assistant professor level, um, kind of between, between grad student and tenure, um, to have a place to kind of discuss their work in an environment that is both kind of um, critically generated, helpful, um, but also kind of lower stakes, lower pressure than uh, an AAR presentation, right? Where there's kind of this performative and sort of high pressure kind of dimension to, to the work and sharing the work and also kind of exchange, you know, sharing opinion, critical feedback on the work. Um, we also had in mind that, uh, and, and so speaking for myself and maybe, maybe uh, you guys have had similar experiences, I tend to have these kind of um, critical back and forths on, on ecology 
and sort of environmental humanities topics like that and fields outside of religious studies, um, typically with um, literature students, philosophers, um, even art, art historians. I tend to have these kind of conversations about, um, Sam, we were talking about uh, your work on new materialism a second ago. Um, you know, this is a field with a lot of applications to, to religious studies and theology, as we've seen. Um, but I don't really hear that many religious studies people, at least in my world, talking about it. Um, and so I guess our idea was sort of to kind of just sort of draw, draw a circle and say that these kind of conversations can happen here. In terms of uh, structure, we were kind of thinking that um, we would try to sort of call different groups of people uh, together twice a month, was it? Twice a month to discuss um, a work in progress. So uh, maybe to start out, we'll discuss kind of new publications in the field, stuff that one of us has an author to kind of create a more um, uh, welcoming and kind of generate kind of the friendly atmosphere we're trying to generate. Um, and then going forward, we would discuss works in progress. So twice a month, get get together a group and help me out here, Russ. About six people. Yeah, that's. I think our hope was was to have, um, you know, especially when when uh, someone's work in progress is being discussed, getting them five or six um, conversation partners who have who have read their work um, and can get together um, over Zoom and. Um, you know, have have a, a respondent who who begins for eight or ten minutes, sort of pointing out, um, you know, the 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 main direction and 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 really sort of the 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 we'll say the essence of the contribution trying to be made in this piece, um, and then you know, then we're off to the races to to discuss, um, you know, give, giving the author um, the opportunity to over the course of an hour really hear um, from from people across the field of religious religion and ecology, um, you know, in depth um, ideas about about how their work and you know how well it's working here and there, um, but importantly, um, also making these meetings where these conversations. Happen happen available to everyone else in the group. So um, think about a sort of uh, a fishbowl conversation, so to speak, where the, you know, author and the, say, six conversants um, or discussion partners, um, you know, come together to have this conversation and everyone else in the group who's not involved, formally involved in the conversation can either listen in or otherwise can engage in one another with, with, the, uh, with the, the chat feature so that, you um, even though the conversation is only happening um, on a sort of more intimate level between five or six people, um, uh, you know, everyone in the group, to whatever extent they're 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 wanting to, can can sort of take part in the conversation too. Yeah, I like that a lot. Is <clears throat> that something that just we don't often have an opportunity to do? Uh, like even you know at conferences. Just kind of have an assortment of people asking questions, but you don't have enough focus to really get into the details with things, right? And you don't often have much time. Everybody has like time to read their paper, and then we always take up that time and a few extra minutes. So by the end of things, there's like time for one question, and it'll come from somebody who's like, ah, I don't know if this is a question or a comment, and you know they might not have really heard most of the paper because they were on their phone. It's uh, <laughs> it kind of loses some focus. Uh, so I appreciate that a lot. I hadn't heard the term fishbowl conversation before, uh, but I like that a lot. It also, uh, it is a nice ecological metaphor. Um, so along those lines, I'm curious, what is the uh, name for this group? Do you want to share the acronym that you've come up with here? Sure. It's uh well, as, as Timothy was saying, you know, real, with a focus on, on early career scholars in the field, it's the, uh, we're thinking, we've thought of calling it the uh, Religion and Ecology Early Career Scholars Reading Group. And the Religion and Ecology Early Career Scholars uh, acronym, uh, fortunately for us, is REEKS. So, um, you know, really, really, um, on the nose with our, our uh, ecological acronyms here. Right, on the nose, nicely done, on the nose. Mm -hmm. This reading group stinks. Uh, <laughs> and I think that speaks kind of, you know, uh, to what you were saying, Tim, about like, there's certain conversations that aren't 
often happening in the field of religion and ecology. And some of it is this kind of critical thinking about the very nature of ecology, right? The nature of nature and how we tend to like things that don't stink. And we like certain kinds of pristine, uh, you know, very beautiful kind of scenes and the ugliness, the edges, the stinkiness, the messiness often gets kind of excluded or swept under the rug. Um, and so I think, you know, that that's a clever way to have an acronym that captures the kind of critical edge that we're trying to foster here. Uh, so when would this be starting? Like, when do you envision uh, this, this group getting off the ground? Do you want to take that, Tim? Sure. I, I think, well, we were hoping to get it started um, mid-January uh, for, the, for the first kind of um, round of, of reading and um, just kind of announcing it. Uh, so hopefully it would go out on the um, uh, Yale forum uh, email list serve, kind of announce it, uh, drum up some interest, and then have the first meeting shortly after that. Nice. Yeah, I think uh, it won't be too hard to to get a lot of people interested, and uh, and then the question will be how how are we going to like referee these papers? Who's deciding uh, who gets in and who has to wait for another month? Uh, is it just us in charge, or what what kind of leadership structure are we envisioning? Three three dudes in charge of a group? I'm not sure. Seems like we're in, thinking something a little more flexible than that. Yeah, I've, I've uh, um, certainly more flexible than that. Um, maybe some sort of advisory group to, to supervise, um, you know, making sure that we're um, adhering to the mission of the thing. That's sort of all that fun institutional stuff. Um, uh, but um, yeah, so, some sort of loose, uh, loose structure um, to, you know, get to, you know, the focus being really to get as many uh, people's uh, work read as possible um, to best facilitate that and, and to facilitate as many uh, good conversations around that work as we can. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll have to wait to see what, um, you know, sort of numbers we're working with. I'm hopeful, you know, we'll have the numbers to, to proceed, as Timothy said, you know, go ahead and begin these meetings and begin discussing, you um, you know, having these, you know, begin having these conversations that we so enjoy um, from time to time at AAR and other forums like that. Um, and, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, I, th I think we're all sort of taking a, a sort of big tent approach at the beginning, which is let's get as many people involved in this as possible. Um, let's, let's read as much work as possible. Um, and let's, you know, make as many connections between our work, drawing on the, on the many um, disciplines um, that religion and, and ecology includes. Um, so yeah, I think it's, I think it's gonna be a really um, sort of exciting space for, uh, for having these conversations. Yeah, definitely hearing, hearing both of you describe it, even though I already knew about this idea, but still hearing you describe it gets me excited about it. I'm like, hey, this sounds like a good idea. Uh, this is definitely the sort of thing I'd uh, be happy to participate in. Um, and if, if somebody was like, hey, there's this reading group happening, I'd be like, finally. Because um, there's just, you know, not enough opportunities to talk about these things. And to think, you know, that this whole field was barely even getting going like in the 1990s, right? That's kind of when it started to emerge. And so then it was just a struggle to even uh, have academic appointments and publications around this. And so now there's enough established uh, material where we can start kind of pushing on some of these edges and having uh, more people, more conversations. Uh, and Tim, like you were saying, more interdisciplinarity Right? It doesn't have to be people squarely in religious studies or religion and ecology. Uh, so that just sounds really fun to me. I really like um, hearing from people who have different backgrounds and uh, different disciplines. And so you might think you know what you're talking about. And then this person's like, well, from an art history perspective, you're not making any sense at all. Uh, <laughs> so I enjoy that a lot. Um, right. I'm curious, you know, if just if you could each think of what's one kind of thing, like what's a topic or a paper idea or something? What's the, an example of the kind of stuff that you'd like to hear people presenting in this group? Any kind of example at all. It doesn't have to be the best, but you know, some kind of idea of the things that you're interested in, in seeing here. 
I mean, I, so this is kind of a maybe on the nose example, but I was uh, I was really impressed by Russ's paper on John Muir um, at our AAR panel, and just kind of just to give a little. I mean, Russ, you could do a better job summarizing your work than I can, but kind of um, pointing out some of Muir's uh, moral failures and kind of contextualizing them um, and sort of pointing out what they mean and what maybe they don't mean for his work and kind of understanding his place in the history of religion and ecology in general, um, specifically kind of his his history of racist views. I think that these are these are the kind of viewpoints that we absolutely have to take into consideration with a lot of these figures, because when we sort of look at the quote unquote um, you know, I, and you know, I don't, I don't even know if I should use the word canon, but this lineage of figures, Emerson, Thoreau, Muir, Leopold, there's a lot to, to look back on there and to revise and to criticize and to kind of, um, you know, not, not in the sense of kind of saying enough with these figures, we're done with these figures, but we can certainly take a moment, take a beat and, and look at what we agree with, what we don't agree with, how we can sort of revise these figures. So that's the kind of work that I would love to see. More critical attention to um, race, issues of racism, more critical attention to uh, gender studies, feminist critiques of religion and ecology. And finally, um, kind of a, a class-based approach to uh, environmental justice within the broader sort of religion and ecology disciplinary framework. I'll echo that, Timothy. Uh, I think, um, as you were saying, Sam, the, the field really sort of, you know, technically getting, uh, <clears throat> getting, uh, getting started, uh, you know, in the 1960s with Lynn White, we'll say, um, but, you know, we've, we've, got a, we've got a tradition in this field to some extent, and insofar as we share plenty of concepts um, and, and we share, um, um, plenty of um, sort of uh, intellectual practices and habits um, that um, have been, uh, you know, so, so much of, of the, the critical work in the field now is to examine these concepts and these practices for how they can further be refined as, as what Timothy is saying. Um, so, you know, the extent to which um, our, our our reading group can be a sort of laboratory for further examining these concepts. You know, we've we've come far enough as a field to have, you know, uh, our you know initial concepts like Timothy mentioned. You know, wilderness as a sort of religious category earlier. You know, then there was you know the the trouble with wilderness. There's a sort of critical critical wave against wilderness, and then there's this second wave of. Well, actually, you know, it's which wilderness. It's not William Cronin's wilderness. It's another, you know, it can be different, many different types of wildernesses. Um, you know, this is the way in which um, the, the the concepts that really give this field currency are are being reassessed and revised, and to 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 provide a forum for these conversations to to take place in a in a in a really robust way and really making good on that you know, experience we often have after panels at conferences, which is we should still be, you know, we should talk more about this stuff, you know, um, now, now we can. <laughs> um, so we should do it. Nice. Yeah. Now that everybody's <clears throat> become kind of an expert on virtual communication and using Zoom and other kinds of platforms like that, like, well, now that we are all so good at this, let's go ahead and, and do it. Yeah, because it's otherwise it's always like you just scratch the surface enough to open up these topics that you don't really get to have the full debate and realize all the issues that are at stake and maybe come to some agreements and changing each other's minds. And uh, so, yeah, I think that sounds sounds really exciting. Yeah, similar thing with like ecology without nature, where you have people like Bruno Latour, Tim Morton kind of saying that. And then Recently, there's people pushing back and be like, no, 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 nature's good. Hold on. It's it depends on which nature you mean. So it's like, oh, well, let's let's have these discussions. Right. And figure out uh, what to do with the basic categories we're using to do this work. I know I had an essay once that um, came back from peer review and I was talking about something ecological and I said something about the natural world and a peer reviewer was like, you can't say natural world. There was no more world anymore. I was like, well, Sure, but like, can't I still say the word? Uh, but that's the question, right? How do we even frame the basic stuff that we're doing? And so having a, a group where we can all sit around and talk about this stuff, I imagine would be really nourishing for that kind of discourse. 
Yeah, and 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 really sort of um, take you know as you mentioned with with our our new you know technological uh, capacities now. Um, using um, this sort of opportunity for for group conversations like this um, to get, you know, to uh, draw on the internationality of the field as a real strength, right? Um, so not only the interdisciplinary, but, you know, extending this to, to, you know, folks who may not otherwise have a chance to take part in the conversations that we so enjoy at conferences, right? Um, how how much further can we can we extend these conversations to the the critical edges of the field? Yeah, and I think uh, one of the challenges, and we'll see, you know, how we're distributed geographically. But of course, time zone is a bit of an issue. But I right. think this uh, you know discussion we're having right now is already a good example of our ability to navigate this because we're across the whole United States right now, right? Uh, Russell, you're in the Eastern time zone. Timothy in the central, and I'm over here, uh, apparently waking up late every day in California. I always feel like I missed the whole day. Everybody's already doing stuff. News is out. And I'm like barely getting my coffee. Um, so we'll see. You know, it's like you know, we'll, I think if we have people coming from like the UK or Germany or something, like that'll push it. But you know. I think we can be flexible with uh, the way we're doing these things that we're doing them a couple times a month. You could have one that's a little earlier, one that's a little later to accommodate the people that are coming at this from, uh, from different parts of the planet. That's right. This thing, this thing can and should be what, what we need it to be. So, you know, floating, uh, a floating time um, in terms of, you know, getting as many voices involved with this as possible um, is, uh, you know, an easy thing to do. Yeah, and I think, um, and you know, feel feel free to to say yes or no to this guy. I think you know part of what makes it kind of exciting to me is that, um, as as kind of a low pressure group, it's the sort of thing that you wouldn't have to worry about, um, you know, showing up to a meeting at ten o'clock in your time zone to, in the evening, and maybe you're not firing on all cylinders. You know what I mean? But it's 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 something that um, you kind of show up. You you do whatever you can and, and you get to know people along the way. You know what I mean? It's not um, hopefully a, you know, a black tie reading group. <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah. Did That's I mention good. it's called Reeks? <laughs> <laughs> That's true, right? That's got to uh, remind people of the overall uh, kind of aesthetic we're going for. You right. don't have to shower before you come to these things. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, that's that's helpful to know because I think and again, this is one of the reasons I think this is so valuable. Uh, there's just not a lot of spaces where academics can get together and, and be kind of like a little stinky, a little schlubby, like, oh, I didn't, you know, really put on my best outfit today. My hair might be a mess. Like, that's okay. Let's just hang out and talk, have a discussion. You don't have to be on your best behavior. Uh, it's okay if you mispronounce some words, you know, uh, a little more relaxed, a little more informal, um, and, you know, a, a way to build some friendships, right? not just uh, to further our academic progress or to build the field, but also uh, figure out a little bit more about ourselves and uh, how we can support each other as uh, we're living through ecological collapse, essentially. Uh, so I don't know, I really appreciate that kind of uh, the tone, the stinking, I'm just, you know, it reminds me of like Donna Haraway talking about staying with the trouble, right? I think we're trying to stay with the stench. Uh, or what is uh, Cornell West often says, don't deodorize the funk, let it stay funky. Uh, so I think this group will do that really well. Um, all right, well, you know, I should probably stop. I have a tendency to talk too long and uh, we try to keep these episodes relatively short, try, and it, do it generally doesn't, doesn't work that well because I talk too much. Um, so I'd love to hear just one kind of closing comment uh, from each of you about the reading group or about what you want to see in 2021 out of the world, anything whatsoever, uh, kind of final thought. I'll, uh, I'll let you start, Russ, and then Tim will have the, the last word. Um, yeah, 20, 2020, I think most of us will be glad to have in our rear view mirror, um, uh, myself included. Um, I'm, I'm really hopeful for uh, you know, what comes next, to be honest. Um, 
it feels like we're in a time where so much has been disrupted. I hate to use that sort of, you know, Silicon Valley buzzword, but, um, you know, we're, we're ripe for some, um, you know, what, it's it's just an interesting time to be alive. I'll just take the take the easy way out and just give you a generality. I'm I'm excited for what comes next. To be honest, I was just reading um, this morning about Biden's climate team. I'm I'm not you know uh, <clears throat> a Pollyanna uh, by any means, but um, you know the the extent to which um, the the green dimension of of life is becoming more and more a part of um, sort of popular consciousness. Um, I think it portends um, some some progress being made, um, and uh, you know, hopefully, um, exciting sort of pathways for intellectual and and moral discovery going forward. So, excellent, very nice, uh, Tim. What do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, I'd like to echo everything Russ said with the with the addition that I, you know. Um, it's an interesting time to be alive. It's a, it's an exciting time. It's a scary time, um, and I think it's actually kind of a, a time that the study of religion and ecology is uniquely posed to help us understand, uh, especially as kind of the overwhelming and undeniable presence of uh, non-humans in the form of viruses, in the form of um, you know changing climatic forces, becomes kind of less and less deniable, less and less easy to ignore and our sort of prevailing modes for understanding the world that we live in, largely driven by, you know, techno science and capitalism continue to sort of fracture and kind of shudder and prevent us from kind of understanding what we're doing. It's just an exciting time to be um, thinking about these kind of things. And I'm, I'm grateful to have the chance to have conversations with people who are also trying to understand this world. Awesome. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. And uh, yeah, we definitely have our work cut out for us. Um, so thanks so much for uh, being on here. Thanks so much for supporting this idea of, uh, of a reading group for early career scholars. And uh, thanks for not deodorizing the funk. Um, so I'll make sure to add some contact info and stuff like that in the description for this episode so people have uh, a way to reach out uh, to us and to connect. And I know we're also going to be advertising this in the newsletter for the Forum on Religion Ecology. So there will be there will be announcements, and, and we'll uh, we'll kind of keep waving that flag and and see uh, see who wants to participate. And I'm um, looking forward to more conversations for sure. So I'll go ahead and leave it there. Thanks so much for being on here, uh, Timothy Grieve Carlson, Russell Powell, and myself, Sam Mickey. I don't think I introduced myself in most of these episodes, I probably should. So uh, thanks so much for tuning in and uh, we'll have more stuff for you next week here on this podcast and this reading group will be going for as long as people want to have it. So thanks so much for being here. Thanks for tuning in and take care.